Hey everybody, welcome to part two in our series on making a custom ribbon to Microsoft Access. In this video we're going to add to the XML that we've built in part one of this series. I've got a link to part one in the description below the video, so if you want to take a look at what we did there and see how we got here, you can have a look at that video first. We're not going to spend any time on the XML we built in the first video because we want to get to the new stuff today. So the built-in controls I'm referring to are the controls that Access already has in its existing ribbons. We can reuse those in ours. All we have to know is the ID of the control. So I'm going to pull our XML onto the screen here. We have a look at it. So in part one of this video, we put generic controls on our ribbon. And for example, we chose to put a button, and we gave it an ID of button 3. That was a button name of our own making. Contrast that with, we want to use a built-in control. Instead of using an ID and giving it our name, we use the ID MSO, and we have to use the, the name that Microsoft gave to it. So how do we find the names that Microsoft has given to its built-in controls? Microsoft provides us with spreadsheets with these names in them. For example, this is the download page for the Office 2013 Control ID spreadsheet. I'm going to put a link to all three recent versions of the download pages in the description below. There's one for 2007, one for 2010, and one for 2013. So I'm going to use the spreadsheet for version 2010 since that is the version of Access I'm using right now. So here's the spreadsheet. You have the control names in this column and the control type in this column. So these are the only two columns we care about today. So I want to use the group text formatting and the group rich text group controls in the first tab of our ribbon. So how do we use these? We make note of the names here, and then we go to our XML, and we include that name as the ID MSO of the control. So I've made a group item here, ID MSO equals group text formatting, and below it, the same thing for group rich text. Now order matters in our XML. So whatever group item we put first is gonna be on the left side, and then the next one is to the right of that, and the next one to the right of that, et cetera, et cetera. So also, I've added a control to our second tab. I removed a couple of buttons, and I changed the name of the first group to database. And inside there, I put a button, and I'm using a built-in button for the compact and repair function. Okay, so here's the IDMSO for that, file compact and repair database. And then we're allowed to give it whatever label we want. It's just a string. I said make this button large, and again, the super tip is we can put whatever we want in the super tip. All right, let's head over to our database. I'm gonna pull up form uses ribbons. I added a button to form uses ribbons to make it a little bit easier for me to use. I added a select all text button. I wanna take a quick look at that code. Property sheet, click the event. All we're doing in that button click is setting the focus to our large text box, which is this guy right there. Meaning the length of the text that's in the box. And I'm making my selection insert at the beginning and the length, the entire length of the box. So what that will do for us, if we pull this up and I click that, it's going to select all the text in the box for me. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to, to copy in our XML. So let's copy in our XML, paste it in. I'm going to head over to the second one, paste it in. Remember this is, the second one, the users, is the one that does not have all the built-in controls. Only the, only the developer version of the tab has all of the built-in controls because we don't want our customers to get to those. We just want those for ourselves when we're doing development work. So let's close our database and then reopen it. So remember we have to reopen our database in order to see our changes because our changes are loaded in at startup. So here is our first tab. We have all the buttons that we had from previously, but we've added now a group for text formatting and a group for rich text. Now on our maintenance tab, we now have the compact and repair button, and it actually will function. It will compact and repair for us. Get back over to the first tab. Now I've added a second form here so that we can see these become used. As you can see right now, they are disabled, and that's because there's nothing on the screen for us to format. There's no text here for us to format. So right here, I've built a simple form. All we have on this form is a text box, and I have the format, the text format, set to rich text. That will allow us to use 
these formatting controls. If we go to our home tab here. So if we copy in some text up here, now we can see that both of these are enabled and we can use them. So let's do uh, let's bold that and make it you know bigger. Maybe even change its color to a, a light blue. Italicize that. Use the rich text functionality over here. Make it a unordered list. There you go. But you can see that they're fun. That the, the the functionality of these controls is already baked in because you're using the actual control from Microsoft, and they will enable and disable themselves based on what you've got going on, on the screen. And disabled again. So I want to show one more thing for these built-in controls. You can set their enabled property, and you can also set their visible property. We're going to set the visible property of the compact and repair whoops, to false. All right, save this real quick and then copy it in real fast to here. All right, close our database and reopen it. Go to maintenance. And now you can see the, the group is still there. We just hid the button. Okay, so the compact repair button is gone. And future videos in this series will talk about how you can set the visible property programmatically and dynamically based on whatever criteria you have. Let's say, for instance, what I do with a lot of my databases is to give myself some extra tools to use if I have to go on, on site. So I will set a bunch of uh, maintenance forms and forms that can give me additional information about what's going on in the database. And I'll have them set to be visible only to my user ID. Everybody else, these forms and even entire tabs are not visible at all. So that way when I go on site and I need these additional tools, I can get them very easily without the customers ever having known they were even there. So that's it for using Microsoft's built-in controls and our custom ribbon. I'll put links to several items in the description below the video. I'll put a link to the part one of this video series as well as the download pages for all three Control ID spreadsheets and also the XML we looked at today. I hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.